hooks are a new feature introduced in React 16.8. Let me quickly get you hooked onto hooks by illustrating how to make use of it in a React application. Traditionally in React, if you needed to use state or certain other features, you needed to rely on class components. With hooks, you bring the same functionality to functional components. Let's understand the use of hooks by looking at an example where we will turn a couple of class components into functional components that make use of hooks to achieve exactly the same purpose. To get you started, let's go to a convenient location on our computer. Here I am in my documents react folder and then clone the git repository that contains a React application with a couple of class components. So we are cloning the true hooks.git from GitHub here. And once that is done, let's move to the to do hooks folder. And you will see that this contains a couple of folders in there, a to-do client, which is implemented in React, and a to-do server implemented using Node.js and Express. And this application is set up to develop using Docker. If your computer is already set up with Docker, then you can go ahead and fire up the containers for the client and the server and the MongoDB database that is used for persistence. Um, if not, then you can go ahead and learn Docker with my series of how-to videos on Docker, a link to which is shown here. Let's go ahead and fire up the containers using docker compose up minus d, and you will notice that this starts up three containers. And once all the containers are started up, you can open the Docker dashboard or Kinematic on your computer and note that we have three containers here, a, a MongoDB container, an Express-based server that is serving up the data for your application, and then the to-do client, which is implemented using React. Let's go ahead and see this application running in a browser. Going to a browser at the prompt type localhost colon 3000 and you will see your React application up and running here. Let's add a couple of uh, items to our to-do list. So this is the simple to-do application implemented here which you can use to um, add to-do items to your list and manipulate these to-do items as seen here. Going back to the terminal, let me see all the commits to this uh, Git repository. And you will see that I have already committed the changes to the Git repository, but to illustrate to you how we make use of hooks, let me go ahead and check out the React class components commit. So let's do git checkout let's go ahead and open the application in a editor here i have the application open in um, visual studio code and in the application you will see that in the to-do client folder we have two uh, React components, the to-do list.js and the add to-do.js, both of which are implemented as class components. Now, in this exercise, we're going to modify these into functional components 
and make use of React hooks to implement the exact same functionality. Let me start with the add to do um, component. Here we see that this is a class component. So I'm going to change that into a functional component. So we'll go ahead and first cut this part out and then use it here. Instead of the class, we'll say export default function and then change this to a functional component. And then let me go ahead and remove this part here. And you see that this uh, functional component is actually hooked into a Redux um, state management in the backend. So we're going to continue to use the Redux um, for managing our state, but with additional hooks that enable us to use this in our uh, functional components. Once we have modified this into a functional component, then we can go ahead and remove the constructor from our function component because that is no longer needed in a functional component. But of course, we are now left with this state that we need to deal with. Now, this is uh, where we use our first hooks in React. And the hook would be called use state hook. How do we make use of the use state hook in React? Now this enables us to use state in a functional component. So uh, to do that, we will go ahead and modify this um, statement and then replace that with an equivalent hook based way of using state. So let me say constant to do item set to do item equal to use state and specify that with an empty string there. Now by doing this, we are specifying to our functional component that we're going to be using the state here. So the use state hook allows you to use state in a functional component. And this call to the use state hook, as you can see, we have imported use state from React here. And as you can see with this modification, this call to the use state inside the function returns in array here. The first part is the current state value. And the second part is a function that allows you to set the state value or to um, update the state value here. Now, once we have done that, how do we make use of this state in our application? You will see that wherever you need to set the state of your application, you would simply call. So notice that in this function called handle submit, we are setting the state here earlier. This is how we used to set the state uh, in a class component. We're going to modify this to use the set to do item function that is provided here. To do that, all that we need to do is to change this to set to do item. And this call to this function here will enable you to set the value of the state. Similarly, you will notice that we have this render function, which is no longer required for us here. So I'm going to remove that part. And also, we're just going to return a value from this function. So we're going to retain this return statement here as such with some modification. So here you see that we were setting the value of this text field to 
this state to do item. Instead, this would just be value is to do item. And then in the on change, we were calling the this set state here. Instead, we would simply say set to do item and supply the value here. In addition, I'm using material UI uh, to um, style my uh, components. So uh, some minor changes to the material UI that I'm using here. So we'll say um, material UI and then make styles with this change. And this is used by material UI. I'm not introducing too much of material UI in this uh, example, just making use of it here. And also uh, this call to the constant will be modified as follows. So we'll say constant classes and we'll say use styles and call this function here. So that way, when we make use of the material UI to style our form fields and so on, we can make use of that as such. In addition, we're going to modify this handle submit method here. So we'll say constant handle submit equal to this function here. And also this will necessitate us to go ahead and modify this to on submit handle submit here. In addition, you see that since we are using Redux, we were using this map dispatch to props and map state to props here. Since we have changed this to a functional component, I no longer need this part. And similarly, this map dispatch to props also is not needed. So I'm going to remove these two. But however, we need to make use of another hook that is uh, provided for us by React Redux called use dispatch. And once we complete that, then we come down to the handle submit function and then change this to dispatch post to do, but to use dispatch, we also need to call the use dispatch function here. And for the sake of keeping it clean, let me move this um, constant declaration up here. That's it. With this, we have updated our class component here, the add to do a class component into a functional component that makes use of the use state hook and also the use dispatch hook that is exported by the React Redux library here. So we see the use of a built-in hook and also a custom hook that is given by React Redux library here. In addition, in the post to do function method, instead of saying this state to do item, we'll just say to do item because that is what is given by this use state hook here. So we'll just say to do item and let's save the changes and then go ahead and see this application running in the browser. Going to the browser, you can see that the application works exactly the same way as before. And you can add in another item 
and delete the item and everything works exactly the same but now instead of the add to do uh, component being a class component it is now implemented as a functional component using react hooks with this we complete this exercise in this exercise we have seen the use of the use state hook in order to enable our functional component to be able to use state within the component also we saw the use of the use dispatch custom hook from the react redux library in the next exercise we're going to continue to modify the to-do list component from a class component into a functional component and then see the use of a couple of other hooks Oh, <laughs>